Hi everybody. So free class. Yes, we've got round to it. It has been absolutely crazy bonkers here, I have to say, because we're teaching and we're filming and we're doing all sorts of different things. So we've finally, finally got round to doing the next free class, which is amazing. And we're going to do fabric and vinyl. Now, hands up, full confession. Mm -mm. I haven't done much fabric on Scan and Cut because I'm not a fabric crafter yet. I need, I need to retire before I can do that. Um, but we're going to we're going to work it out together. OK, so I'm going to try things and see what works and what doesn't work. And we'll take it from there and then we'll do vinyl. So different style of class this time because we're doing the same class for the SDX users and the CM users. So it's not going to be two separate ones. But what we're going to do is do something on the SDX with the SDX Auto Blade. Then we're going to take the auto blade out and we're going to put the CM blade in because basically it's just about settings. Okay, so you just need to know what pressures and blade depths you need on CM and we need to work out what works better for which fabric. So that's what we're going to do. And then I've got something else very exciting to show you at the end. But you might as well watch both because you might learn something. And you never know, and this is not me pushing you in any way, shape or form, but one day you might upgrade to an SDX, so then you'll know what to do. Right, that's that boring bit done. So I have got a brand new low tack mat. This is the same for both machines, okay? And I've put on one of the high contact green support sheets. So when you take this out of your out of the bag, you literally stick it onto your mat with this label facing up, okay? And when you peel this backing off, then the adhesive is facing up, okay? So you, that's what you do. Don't try and peel the two apart because you'll end up with a sticky mess. And I know that because I did it. So do as I say, not as I do. So as we peel this off, it leaves you with a sheet of very sticky adhesive. Now, Brother have brought out what they call a fabric mat. And basically, it's this, it's with this already on it. Okay, so it's nothing... It's no, nothing different than doing this, but if you prepare to buy the fabric mat, buy the fabric mat. Now, I have tried this previously and it was grey and it cut, but it also cuts into this sheet and you can't do anything to avoid that. It's just, that's the way it is. But you don't need to keep re redoing it every time you cut it. You can keep going until it's literally shredded. The only downside I found to this when you were cutting like a thin poplin was that it cut it really well and it held it in place without stabilizing it with an iron on stabilizer. However, getting it off, it tended to fray. So we're going to try it again and we'll see what we get. And that way we'll know whether it does or whether it doesn't, won't we? So first things first. I'm going to take a piece of this poplin. Now we sell this poplin at Highlight Crafts and we sell it and we print it ourselves because we have two big, massive inkjet printers that print on fabric and it's brilliant watching them. And I'll do a little video sometime just to show you because it really is, I could sit and watch it for hours. It, it fascinates me. So I've got my cotton poplin and I put it straight on the top of there and we're just going to cut a hexagon, all right? So we're going to just do a very basic shape and see where we get to. So on the SDX, you get a fabric blade and the fabric blade has the beige top. This blade is brilliant, okay? I love this blade. It's just fabulous. So I'm going to pop that into there and we're just going to cut a hexagon, all right? So stylus. Woo! <laughs> it's been one of those days today. So we're going to go into patterns. It hasn't been one of those days, it's just been a busy day. And we're going to find the hexagon, okay? So you could cut all your hexagons out for your um, English paper piecing, if you wanted to. And I'm just going to move this down a little bit away from the edge. So I'm going to load the mat in. And we're going to see what we get. Now it knows it's got a fabric blade in there now because it reads the barcode that's on the back. So it knows that it's now cutting fabric. So we're going to press OK, please select and cut. And we're going to go into our settings and make sure that auto is on cut amount and auto is in cut pressure and make sure that half cut is off because I've had that, I've been using that quite a bit this week. And then we're going to press start and see what we get, okay? 
So I'm quite as excited as you are about this. But I haven't got time to do something else. <laughs> I've got time to learn quilting and sewing right now. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Let's unload it and see what we've got. So I am going to just peel back this corner. So I'm going to take it from the corner and see if that helps because I know it will have cut it and I know it will have cut it well, but it's getting it off the mat, I found, that was a little bit tricky. So I've got to then take all this away to get to this bit. Right, so let's move that. So it's cut that fabric and it's cut it really nicely, but now I need to get it off here. And this is when, add a bit of it, oh no, it's not too bad this. So hop, I would put your scraper on your mat and pull your fabric. Okay, so that's okay, that's good. I'm happy with that. It's a little bit of a fray there, but you're gonna get that anyway, I think. So, okay, so that works. So I'm happy with that bit. So let's try and get this fabric back in place now. It's like wallpapering where you start in the middle and get all the bubbles out. <laughs> and we're just going to press this down. So I'm now going to try this with the rotary blade. Now the rotary blade is just for the SDX, okay? So let's see what we get with the rotary blade because I've had success with the rotary blade with crepe paper as long as you make your mat really sticky, but I haven't really tried it on the fabric because I tend to use this fabric blade because it's brilliant. So we'll pop the rotary blade in and we'll do the same shape. So we'll go back, I'm going to duplicate it. So object edit and duplicate, so I've got two. And then stylus Melanie. Literally just had it, literally disappeared. <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to delete that one. And the reason I duplicated and deleted it was so that I could see it. Because if I scan this in, I'm not going to see very much. Okay. Where has that gone? I literally just had it. Oh, right in front of me. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Right, let's load this. At least I give you a laugh, don't I? Hey? And we're going to do this. Now the rotary blade is interesting because it doesn't cut in one go. It does a line and then it does another one, then it does another one. So let's see what we get with the rotary blade. So please select and cut and start. And then we'll do it with the CM blade so that you know what your settings are. We're gonna work methodically through it all. So this is an interesting one to watch actually because it does a line and it does another line. Then it does another line. Right, let's see what we've got. Now, like I say, I'm not au fait with rotary blades, so I don't really know what's good and what's not, but we'll try it. Oh, I wonder if I have to do a setting. I might have to do a setting. I think I have to do a setting because I can't see that that's even cut through, but let's just, let's see. Because it might just be a really good cut. Oh, it is oh, just a really good cut. Okay, Melanie, have faith. Come on. You've known this machine long enough, you should know it won't let you down. Right, there we go. So let's see if we can get this up now. Okay, so rotary blade works really nicely too. So, and actually, it's not really cut through that backing either, because when I tried it before, it used to, the backing used to come off with the shape. So let's see if we can get this off. I mean, you'd have a quarter inch seam allowance on this as well, wouldn't you? So the fraying bit wouldn't really matter. Okay, so that's okay. Pretty similar, really, I would say. That one frayed a little bit more. So we've gone from a sharp blade to not to a not sharp blade, which sounds weird, doesn't it, for a rotary blade, because it's not sharp, but it seems to have done the job. Right, let's do CM blade now and see what settings we need for this. Now, I cannot be accurate because I don't know how old your blade is. So I'm gonna go with a blade that I've been using for a little while. I would definitely, definitely keep a different blade for fabric than you keep for card in exactly the same way that you do it with your scissors. So I'm going to gauge this and I'm going to take that out. I'm going to put a CM blade in. Now 
let's see, that looks pretty okay. So I'm going to set this to about, I'm gonna go about three and a half, I think. So I might do four, I'd rather do more than less. So I'm gonna pop that in there. And then I'm going to here go, please select and cut. And that will give me the ability to be able to set these settings. So cut pressure, I'm gonna put on two and just see where we get to. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna move that shape. So I'm gonna move that over to here, just under four. And I'm gonna see what we get. We can only try, can't we? That's all we can do and see what we get. And if it doesn't cut through, then we know we need to change it. And this is kind of like the process that I go through, okay? When I'm working things out, especially when we used to have the CM machines. And sometimes, I'll let you into a little secret, sometimes I use the CM blade in my SDX because I find it's, it's quicker because it doesn't read it every time. So if I know the settings for something, tend not to bother. Right, now that felt like it was pulling a little bit. It hurt, I heard that scratchy noise, which meant that it was almost dragging the fibers. So let's see what we've got, because we can adjust it accordingly, can't we? Oh, okay. Nope, all right with that too. Right, we'll get rid of this now. I can take all this off, because we've done that bit. Right, let's get rid of that, pop that down there. So let's have a look. Okay, I'm quite impressed with that actually. So let's see, get this underneath. That's the problem is you stick to the mat because it's got this really sticky sheet on. So use your spatula to hold this down and then you can just lift that up. Actually, that's a really nice cut too. Okay, so blade, mine's been used quite a few times. So blade four. So if it's a new blade, try three and pressure two. And although it's cut into this, it hasn't cut very deep and it's managed to keep that intact. So that's actually pretty good. Now I want to try a different material and I want to try our faux leather because I think this might be quite good too. So this is all on this same mat. So I'm doing this mat first and then I'm gonna go and do a mat without this on and just with a stencil glue, see if that's any better. So I'm gonna position this and I'm putting it on with the faux leather down because this has got a fabric backing and it's almost silky, feels really soft. So I'm gonna put it leather side down so that I can really burnish it down, okay? And we're going to try this with our, I'm gonna try it with the normal blade, I think because it's a deeper blade, it's a stronger blade. So rather than using the fabric blade, I'm gonna use the, just the regular blade. So same shape, so I'm gonna go back and actually I can scan this in now so we can see where we're working. So let's load this in and give it a scan, because we can. <laughs> so we're gonna scan and start. It's gonna show me a picture then. So that's good, but I want to see if the, if the poplin then works on a standard mat that's been re-tacked with stencil glue. So it's a new mat, but I've tacked it straight away. So let's see what we get. Right, so I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna take that up there. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So let's take that down in size so we're not just cutting it for the sake of cutting it. And then we'll give that a go. So. Please select and cut and start. I don't need to adjust anything from auto because it'll read it, it'll read the depth. And then it's gonna read the fabric. Adjust itself accordingly, like it's clever, isn't it? Oh, that was quick. <gasps> See if it's worked. I think it might have done, you know. So let's get underneath this. This faux leather is lovely, actually. So let's peel this back. Look at that. Look at that. How fabulous is that? Right, I'm going to get that off. I'm going to try the rotary blade. See if the rotary blade works on it. I don't know whether it will or not. Look at that. That's cool. Faux leather. Excellent. Right, I'm happy with that. 
Now my brain's going, oh, you could, you could, could you find time to start quilting? Oh, my head's going, no, you couldn't, Melanie. No, you couldn't. <laughs> and my son, Matthew, who um, has never done anything creative in his life, has decided to, so he started a new job. He, he fits smart meters, just my son. And he started to work with a new company. And um, one of the lads that works with him, Matt, which is very confusing because you've got Matthew and Matt. I'm just going to scan this in again so I can see it. Um, paints Warhammer, three so Warhammer games, but he doesn't paint the models. So Matthew was telling him about what I did. And Matt said, do you think your mum could paint me some models? <laughs> Matthew went, my mum doesn't even have time to come home, let alone paint models for you. He said, but I'll have a go. Anyway, it turns out he's very, very, very good at it. So if I haven't got time to do, go home, I certainly haven't got time to start quilting. But yeah, he's very, very good at it. So check him out. He's on his uh, Brush and Blade Studios. And he's on Instagram. He's very good. I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. I said, seriously, Matthew, have you done that? He's like, yep. Right, so let's try it with the rotary blade now and see what we get. Now, there is an adjustment settings. So we'll see whether we need it or not. Because I haven't really done much, well, I haven't done any fabric with the rotary blade. So this is an interesting one. So yeah, check him out, Brush and Blade Studios. Blows my mind, because they look quite, they look like this size on the pictures. They're actually about this size. It's ridiculous. Don't know how he does it. Right, so let's move this. Let's get rid of this here. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm quite impressed with this. No, Melanie. <laughs> right, this it's can you see how it's quite difficult to pull this off? Because it's I mean look, I mean literally, it's like properly sticky. This isn't like stencil glue sticky, this is another level. Right, so yes, your rotary blade will work through your faux leather, which is great. All right, so we know that that works. Right, let's try another piece with our CM blade and see where we get to with this. So, turn the mat round, position this. I'm just gonna get rid of that little bit there because that might just cause a bit of a problem. We don't want any problems. Right, let's get that off. Right, so CM blade now. So rotary blade out and CM blade in. So knowing what I know, I'm going to put this on six and I'm going to put the pressure on three, I think. The best way to test it without ruining your fabric is to go to please select and cut and you can do a little test cut. So when you click on test, it opens up this screen and you can choose a, a shape. So it's put a little triangle down there you see, and it will just test it for you. So that's the easiest way to do it. Right, I'm just gonna scan this in again, just to make sure, because I might as well if I've got a scanner. It's quite fun doing a class like this, isn't it? Where you just try. I do like doing things like this. So scan it in again. So it works with that leather. We also do um, a smooth faux leather as well, which almost has like a felt backing to it. So again, I would cut it that way. If that cuts, because that's the, the one that we're cutting now cuts, this will definitely cut, and I will probably use the same settings. Right, let's see what we get on with the CM. So I'm going to move it over here in case it's not quite right first time. And please select and cut. I'm going to start with my pressure on two. So start lower and work up rather than working higher and risking cutting through your mat because you see our mats are thinner. So just be aware of that. Right, so let's have a look, see what we get now. Okay, let's see. Perfect. Okay, so CM, yes. Fabric blade, yes. Rotary blade, yes. Excellent, right, so that's those with that sticky mat. So now I'm gonna put this up, back in, back on, otherwise. It will attract everything. Cat hair, dog hair, glitter, embossing powder, dust, all of the above. So make sure you put your cover back on and allocate a mat just for fabric.
okay? Don't try and go between the two. And actually, once it's shredded, it's quite easy to get off. It's not like you've got to really fight with it, so that's okay. Right, we're going to do the same thing now. But we're going to do it with a, a new standard mat that I have put a good layer of stencil glue on, okay? So I can actually pick up, she says, pick that mat up like that so it's not quite as sticky as the sheets. But I thought, you know what, if it does it on this, then stencil glue's a goer, isn't it? Right, so let's put this on here again. Let's turn it around because I thought I cut it to 12 by 12, but the cut area is slightly smaller. That'll do. And then we're going to go from the middle out, get rid of any bubbles. You don't want bubbles. That's not good. And we'll do the same thing again. So let's go with the fabric blade first of all. What I'm why, The reason I'm trying this, and this isn't about the blades, is to just see whether the fabric moves because it's not held as stably as with one of those sheets. Well, it might be. We're about to find out, aren't we? So let's load it in. So this is unstabilized fabric without the high contact adhesive sheet, but with the stencil glue. Because it might be that you just want to do some fabric on card and you don't want to go to the length of buying the, the double-sided sheets. So let's go cut and start. And I just want to try it with this blade and the rotary blade, because if it doesn't move with this blade, it's not going to move with the CM blade either. So let's see what we get. Okay, let's see. Now I'll put more of the stencil glue on than I would normally with paper. Look at that, that's beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. And I'm going to just bend, well, I'm just going to get that scraper underneath there and just get that corner up. See, I think that's easier to remove too. Yeah, it is much easier to remove. It doesn't fray as much either. So that's with your regular blade and stencil glue on your mat. So let's try it with the rotary blade on this on this mat. And then I know the CM blade will be, this, will be just the same. So we don't need to worry about that one. Right, let's get those little bubbles out. You don't want ridges in your fabric. Right, so let's press OK, go back. I'm going to move this over. There we are. Get that blade out. Rotary blade in. A whole production line going on here, aren't we? And this is fabulous because if you are a quilter, I mean, some of you will absolutely love the process of cutting it out with a rotary blade. Absolutely. Brilliant. It's like traditional... Pergamano, when they go around it all, they do the white pen first and then trace it all out. Brilliant. But if you're somebody that that bit you re really don't enjoy, let this machine do it for you because it's from brother. They're used to sewing machines and embroidery machines, so they know what they're talking about. Right, let's try the rotary blade and see if that works. It's quite exciting. Okay, fascinates me how it works this, it literally does check it and do it in lines. You can see it goes back and stops, does the next line. So the fabric blade is quicker, that's for sure. But the rotary blade you can use for crepe paper, so if you've seen any of Amanda's flower making videos with crepe paper, now, oh yeah, see it doesn't like that. Now, let's see if... I can do a different setting. So let's go into here and let's go down. Cut mode, rotary or fine, normal or fine. Okay, let's see if there's a blade adjustment area. All right, let's try it on the fine. I don't know that that will make any difference, but at least we know we've tried it then. So, I just saw something then. What did I see? Three millimeters. Reading, oh no, that's nothing to do with this. That's the next one. Right, so if we go back, move that over. Let's try it one more time with the rotary blade without the, without the mat, without the sticky sheet underneath it. Because then at least we know poplin cuts with the rotary blade with the sheet, 
but not necessarily without. So let's see what we've got. And start. I've done two scan and cut classes this morning because um, we're in the middle of what we do is a festival. And just sat there and watched these people sit there like that watching the machine cut. <laughs> I still do it now, all those years on. Fascinates me still. Amazing. Right, let's see what we've got now. Let's peel this back. Okay, that's better. Okay, I'm all right with that. There's a little bit there that it hasn't quite caught, but you know what? A couple of threads. That's not bad, you know. Interesting, isn't it? I would have thought the fine would have been a lighter cut. So, yeah, you've got that fabulous little... Uh, that piece there. So, okay. So rotary blade on fine works with just a tacky mat, but make sure you put the stencil glue on. Don't just put it on a standard mat. Um, and then it works with the CM blade. It works with the SDX fabric blade, etc., etc. So that's good. So we know that that's, that's a good start. That's poplin. Right. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to move that mat under there because that's super sticky. And I'm going to bring in a mat for stabilised fabric. That'll do, I think, for stabilised fabric. Right, so what I mean by stabilised is I have taken some quilting cotton and ironed on a product called Heat and Bond. And Heat and Bond is a product that I have used for the past 96, 2006. 28 years and it's a sheet of glue it's from a company called Thermoweb in the states and unlike Bondweb which is a fusible webbing and over time can break down in the wash this is a sheet of glue so you iron it with a dry iron on a hot heat onto the back of your fabric and then before you put it onto your scan and cut mat you take the paper backing off because otherwise the paper backing will stick to the mat and the fabric will move Take it off and then you can position this onto your mat, okay? And I'm going to do a more intricate shape with this because this is just brilliant. So I'm not going to use this with the rotary blade. You could do, I guess, but we'll test it. But the fabric blade with this is just, just blows my mind. So I'm going to load this in. Let's do a, a more detailed cut. So home and okay. Retrieve data from, no, we don't, we want to go to patterns. And um, we're going to go, I'm going to find the fairy because she's quite intricate and it's nice to try it with a more detailed cut. So the fairy, I'm going to set her on the mat. I'm going to make her smaller to make it harder. So let's make her 59 mil, 58 millimeters. Let's load this in and scan this fabric in. So let's scan from here and press start. So imagine you're doing a quilt block. You can scan your fabrics in, position the pieces where you want them to go. The machine will then draw them for you with the erasable pens that you can get from Brother and the pen holder. And it will then cut it out with a quarter inch seam allowance for you because it can. I mean, how amazing is that? I'm going to position her there. I'm just going to move her down a little bit so she's not too close to that edge. Press please select and cut and start. And it's it's a funny one this because when it cuts this, it's almost like you can't see where it's cut. And when I'm on TV doing this, you can see the presenters opposite me and they're like, look like that and then look at me and then look at that with a little bit of a startled, startled look on the face. And I'm like, it's all right, it's cut, don't worry. <laughs> it's just because it's a good cut. If you're not getting a good cut, it's puckering it and it's pulling it. So, yeah, it is quite funny. Quite like doing fabric because it just makes them go like that. <laughs> That's the mischief in me, that. Of which there is a lot. I love this. I love this fabric blade. It really is very, very, very good. 
very impressed by it. And interestingly, the Scan and Cut was made for fabric cutters, customers originally, because the file format is called FCM, which is Fabric Cutting Machine. But when they first brought it out, the blade wasn't good enough, and the fabric crafters went, no, no, I'm not wasting my material on that. So the paper crafters picked it up, and then they brought out the new fabric blade, which is really interesting. Now, I can't see that that's cut at all. You can just feel it. And it almost cuts it like a steel rule die. It's that precise. It's very, very, very good. So I'm just going to hold my mat with my spatula, and then we're going to get underneath her wing here. And this is just ridiculous. Because if I now put that on that paper backing, you can see there's little teeny tiny circles and stars up here, and it's cut every single one of them. And then it's also done a perfect edge because that heat and bond is stabilizing at the back. You can do much more intricate detail, which I love. So maybe you've made a quilt and then you want to do some applique. This is the thing, but definitely try heat and bond because it's a product that I've used for decades and it's never let me down. It's a brilliant product. So there's your fairy. Right, we're going to do the same thing now, but we're going to do it. It won't do it with the rotary blade, I don't think. I think that's just a silly thing to try because it can't go that small. So I'm not even going to worry about that one, but I'm going to do it with the CM blade now so that you can see what we can find out what settings. So because it's not an old, because it's not a new blade, it is an old blade. I am going to set it on the settings that I used to use and see where we get to. Let's get that bubble out of there. Right, so let's go back, edit. I'm going to move her over to there and I'm going to scan the fabric back in. And it's always worth those extra few seconds that it takes to scan it in to make sure that you're getting it in the right place. Right, I'm going to scan this in. And while it's doing this, I'm going to adjust this blade down to five. And I'm going to up my pressure. Mm, do you know what? Might keep it the way it was for the poplin actually and see what we get. Yeah, let's do that. Let's keep it at seven and a pressure of two. And bearing in mind, this is not a new blade. Right, so let's pop her there. Okay, please select and cut. So it now knows when I go into here that I'm cutting with the manual blade. We'll press start and see, see if it works. It's definitely doing something. And the fabric hasn't moved yet, so that's good. And there's some really tiny pieces in this. So it's really, it's, it just shows you that it's, it's a great blade. Sounds different to the other blade. But we'll soon find out, won't we? Right, that started to pull a little bit. So that tells me that my settings aren't quite right. And it sounded like it too. It's okay, but what I would do is, let's have a look. Oh no, it's done an all right job. No, it's okay, yeah. I think it's one that you have to play around with, I think, really. So there's a couple of little bits there that I can still get out. And it's just pulled it a little bit there, so I'm not happy with that. So what I'm going to do, the reason that it would do that, I think, is because it's not, the blade isn't, the blade's deep enough, but there isn't enough pressure. So what I'm going to do is drop my blade down which just contradicts everything that I've said, but I'm gonna up my pressure because I need it to force that blade through that fabric and cut it from underneath. So I'm gonna do it again. It might just be that I'm better with a new CM blade, but at least we'll have an idea, won't we? I keep saying that, same thing, Melanie. Of course we'll have an idea because we're trying it. 
get to the stage where I talk to myself when I'm tired. <laughs> I have to do, otherwise I can't remember what I'm doing. Stylus keeps hiding. And what I need them to do is drill a hole through it, then I can put it in a string around my neck. <laughs> right, let's scan this in again. Andrew says I need a stylus holder on top of the machine. I think what I need is a piece of blue tack at the side so I can stick it to it. <laughs> you could make something out of card on the scanning coat. Absolutely, Andrew. Yes, you could. Right, so I'm going to do that there. I've got my blade on. Should I move that down to five? Did I not move that down to five? Sure I did. Anyway, there we go. So I'll move that down to five. Then press OK. Please select and cut. And I'm going to up my pressure to four. See what we get this time. Sounds a bit better. Sounds a bit better. If I end up with a fairy cut out of my mat, <laughs> we'll know that there's the wrong settings, right? But at least I've tried it. Again, I would allocate a different blade to your paper blade because I've been using these on paper, so that might be a reason. You could test it on an old mat first, so put some stencil glue on and just make a, it tacky and test it just to make sure. I don't want you to cut through your CM mats because that's really frustrating, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look. Well, I haven't got a fairy out of my mat, so I'm all right. <laughs> but your mats are thinner, so just be aware of that. Right, okay, this looks better to me. So, it needed that little bit more force to get through that fabric and cut it from underneath. That's perfect now. Absolutely perfect. Let me turn the mat over and I'll put it on the back for you so you can see. Look. Even those little stars. Can we come in any closer, Andrew? Please. So Andrew's just asking what would happen if you went round twice. I'd rather you cut fabric in one go because once you've cut it once, you don't want to do, you need to go through in one go because it needs to cut it from underneath. It's not like paper or card that's got fibers, it's got threads. So if you don't go right through the first time, it's gonna pull those threads, which is what happened with this one. And we ended up with a tear there because it's pulled the threads rather than, show you here, look. You see it's pulled there. It's torn that bit of fabric. So what it's doing is you're asking a sharp blade to drag through through threads and it doesn't give you a good finish, whereas those two are absolutely perfect. So pressure four, blade five, that's an oldish blade. So if you're using a new one, drop your blade and drop your pressure slightly, but that's perfect on a CM and an SDX. So that's really good, happy with that. And I'm just gonna check the front where we've just cut. So that blade's gone quite deep there. So I would try dropping your blade back or just taking your pressure down to three. And then I think that will work for you with the new blade. Okay, so test it on an old mat first, please, to make sure and then you're not just cutting through your mats. Right, I think that's fabric done. For now, that's what we're going to do. If there's any other fabrics you need us to, to test, please let us know and we'll try and get a hold of some and test them for you. Um, but for now, cotton poplin and um, your faux leather, It's a, I'm happy with that, that's really good. So Andrew's asking about Hessian, I wouldn't even go anywhere near Hessian for two reasons. One, it's a very, very open weave. And two, you won't get, you won't get it off your mat because it it's fibrous you'll just end up with a messy mat. Felt, on the other hand, is doable, but you have to stabilize it. So you have to put heat and bond on the back of felt because otherwise you're sticking fluff to, 
to stick it to a sticky mat and you're just never going to be able to use that mat again because you won't get it off. So felt you need to stabilise with heat and bond and I would have a smaller piece of felt and a bigger piece of heat and bond so that the edges of the felt don't hit your mat. But I've cut felt before and brothers say that that's why they put their lever on the side of an SDX so that you can lift the back rollers because felt, you can cut up to three mil felt, but use a good quality one. Clarity, who's a stamp company in the UK, because there'll be people watching this all over the world, um, have just bought out a, an adhesive backed felt for die cutting. So I'm going to try some of that because I think that'll be really good on here. That's a good, that, that'd be a good one for you to use. Right vinyl okay so we have a vinyl blade for the sdx which is absolutely brilliant and it's funny because when um i'm letting you into into the secrets here when i first went to see the guys from brother they flew over for japan when they were when we were launching this and i went over to manchester to meet them to their head office there and they introduced me to the SDX and the first thing I asked them to do was cut the tiny snowflake that I always used to cut on air, the tiny, tiny, tiny snowflake um, out of vinyl. And with that blade, it just screwed it up, even with half cut on, because the tip of the blade is too wide and it can't get into all those little plate pieces to cut a five millimeter snowflake, because that's a very difficult thing to do. So I knew eventually they would have to bring out a vinyl blade. You don't need a vinyl blade for the CM machine. You can use your regular blade because that's also very, very fine. So if you've got a CM machine, you can use this. If you've got a old CM machine, but you've upgraded to an SDX and you've still got the blade, you can use this blade, but it doesn't make it an auto blade. And it also doesn't apply half cut or the weeding box but you can put a rectangle around it. So if you're in the market for a really good vinyl blade, buy the auto blade for your SDX. For CM, we're gonna use this. Right, let's get some vinyl, first of all. And I'm gonna use metallic vinyl because metallic vinyl is a little bit uh, thicker than just regular colored vinyl. And I tend to cut this twice because the, the worst bit about vinyl is weeding it out at the end because you've got to get all those little pieces out the middle and it's a nuisance if you haven't if, if the vinyl is still slightly attached it's really hard work and it drives you crazy so let's make it easy right vinyl on my mat vinyl blade in tick so I'm going to do a word and while it's cutting, I'm going to talk to you about the settings for vinyl on your CM blade because this will automatically read it. So let's press home and get rid of the fairy. Let's go into patterns and let's choose a font and we'll choose. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do this one of these uh, words and phrases and we'll do anniversary and we'll set it on the mat and we'll really test it like really, really test it and we'll make it smaller. So let's take it down to the size you would have it on a card. So 25 millimeters high, that's too big. Let's take it down to 20 and 49 wide. So I'm gonna pop that up here. I'm gonna press okay. And I'm gonna keep going until I get to please select and cut. It knows it's got the vinyl blade in because it's read the barcode on the back. I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to put half cut on. I'm going to bring it back up to auto. And I'm going to add a weeding box. And a weeding box is a rectangle that it puts around the word so that you don't have to peel the whole lot of vinyl back. You can just take that box away. And you can also set the distance of that weeding box. So I've got mine on three millimeters. So you put the weeding box on. After you've cut it once, the weeding box will automatically come off, but the half cut will stay on. So you have to manually take that off. So I'm going to press OK. And I've now got my anniversary with a, with a rectangle around it. Half cut's on and we're going to press start. It's times like this when I'm really pleased that I learned my CM machine properly. 
and I learned all the pressures and the blade depths because not only does it help me when I'm cutting with my CM blade, but it also helps me with things like the fabric and things like the scoring with a blade, which we're going to do another video for you. It's not gonna be a full class, but I'm gonna show you the different ways. Because now I understand what the, what the machine's pressures and depths are like, I can then tell you exactly what you need to do. And that's actually, it's for me, I know a lot of you hated that bit, the pressures and the blade depths. For me, it was a bit of a challenge and like a challenge. Right. It's putting its weeding box around it now and I should have brought some tweezers in and I haven't, but we'll, we'll manage, we'll make it work. So I'm gonna get the blade. This is really naughty. Please do not do this at home, but I don't have an option right now other than leaving the room. So I'm gonna go under here with the blade and just lift this weeding box up. I'm not gonna weed the whole thing out. Look at that. Tell you what, look at that. I am gonna weed it out. I'm gonna just get that little bit out of there and that little bit out of there. Actually, it's quite good using the blade. Don't say that. I know I'm in I'll get in trouble, but actually that's really cool. That's uh, better than a pair of tweezers. Don't tell them, but it is. Right, come in really, really, really close on that, Andrew. Move it into the middle there. Lovely. Oh, I'll keep moving it. Look how that a tiny that is. And then to get that off, because this can be this can be a bit of a thing too. <laughs> get yourself a really good, please, a really good transfer tape. There is a company called GM Crafts, and this is theirs, and I like this one. Don't get one that's too sticky because it'll drive you crazy because you won't get it off. And we're going to position this on here, and then we're going to use our little scraper and burnish this down. So give it a good burnish like that. And then we're going to get a hold of this here and we're going to peel it back and the flatter, so I'm just going to adjust this, I'm just going to turn myself around a minute because the flatter you can peel vinyl back, the easier it is. So get your, your get your um, transfer tape, words went then, and then just move it back and keep it flat. And it will pick up all of that vinyl like that. Look at that, how cool is that, right? And then we can take a piece of card and then you're gonna burnish this down. Now, normally I say I cut it twice. I didn't cut it twice that time because I didn't need to. So it might be the gold that needs it twice. Find the golds a little bit thicker, but it's done all right that. Happy with that result. Right, and then when you're peeling this off, get your finger on top of your transfer tape and literally roll it back like that. And there you've got your anniversary, look at that. Oh, there you go. How fabulous is that? Right, let's do the same thing now, but with our um, CM blade. And I'm gonna show you how to put a weeding box around it. Because we're not gonna be beaten. Right, so let's go back. See, the weeding box has come off, so I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna move the anniversary over to here, and I'm going to add, and I'm gonna go into patterns and basic shapes. I'm gonna bring on a square, and I'm gonna set it on the mat. And then I'm gonna pull that over there, and then I'm gonna make the square smaller. So object edit and resize, make it smaller, move it over like that, make it a little bit smaller still. Oh, not that small. And then I'm going to separate the height and the width and make the height narrower like that. And then just put it around that anniversary. So there's always a way. And height again, just take that down a little bit further. There we go. That'll do. Right, so I can position, I can align those. So let's multiple select everything on the mat and align it centrally vertically, centrally horizontally. There we go. Right, let's do that. So CM blade now. Let's see. I'm gonna put it on, 
what am I going to put it on? I'm going to put it on just in, I'm going to try it on two. Might be a bit too deep, might not be deep enough, but we try, don't we? Right, let's go to please select and cut and I'm going to drop the manual pressure down to minus one. Again, don't know how old your blade is, but we'll see what we get. Right, let's see. Start. Oh, quite enjoyed this class, actually. It's nice trying new stuff, isn't it? Oh, that sounds like it's a bit too deep to me. Sounds like it's cutting through the backing. We don't want it to cut through the backing, we want it to kiss cut it. Can hear it cutting too much, it's shh in, which means it's cutting through paper. Let's have a look, see what we've got, because there's nothing worse than trying to get back in our vinyl. <laughs> that's what we don't want to do, we want to kiss cut it. Right, that's too deep, I can see. Right, let's have a look, see if it's cut, if it's cut right through the backing, which I suspect it has. We're going to drop that back. So it looks deep to me that, yeah, it's gone right through that back in. Okay, so we know that that's no good. So tick, that doesn't work. Right, let's get this off here. We're going to go a lot lower. So we can use the same file, but we are going to drop our settings back. So I'm going to go, please select and cut. And I'm going to drop it down to minus three. And I'm also going to take my blade down to one. And then we're going to press OK. We're going to go back and we're going to move that. Oh, thing on the mat. Group it, Melanie. Just group it. Make it easy for yourself. Move that over there. Right, let's try it again. So, load mat. This is what they call kiss cutting. I know you'll probably know that, but there's always new people coming to craft every day. So, let's press OK. And I love vinyl because it means you can personalise things. So, you can personalise your drinks, bottles, your phone cases. Andrew's just bought a caravan, like a, a camper van done it all up so I want to I want to vinyl it now it'll go out one day it'll look like Scooby-Doo's wagon won't it <laughs> have big flowers all over it okay big truck that still sounds like it's cutting through the back to me it's still shitting at me I can hear it okay let's have a look it's not as deep, so we're getting there. But I want to see whether it's cut through the backing or not. Okay, we've kiss cut there. That's perfect. So let's see if we've got if we have gone through the backing. No, we haven't. Right, perfect. So settings for CM without with a blade that isn't brand new. Okay, so blade on one, pressure on minus three. So if you are working with a brand new blade, I'll put your pressure on minus four and try it and see what happens. So that is cutting fabric and cutting vinyl on your scan and cuts. Now, I have something else to tell you. So we're gonna continue with the free classes. We're gonna do one every about every sort of four to six weeks, I think. But we're also going to introduce a different style of class because we do lots of different ones. So we do online classes that go with product. We do made from the memory classes where you make 3D projects from the shapes inside the machine's memory. And we're going to be doing more of that online, which is great. But I also wanted to introduce you some shaped cards into the mix because I wanted to, and I wanted to start with steppers because I thought it was a really nice one to start with. So earlier on today, we filmed three, three classes. I'm going to show you on the overheads. So you've got a double side stepper that has all the score lines in. 
you have a regular side stepper that has all the score lines in and we're scoring with the blade so I teach you how to do that and we're also doing a side stepper so we are also going to do a separate free scoring class so you'll know which blade to use all the different options okay because it will depend on your machine and the blade and everything else now we have got a special introductory offer for this because there's three classes so three cards in one purchase and we're doing a special introductory offer so instead of being 9.99 it's $4.99 if you buy it through YouTube. So you're going to click on this button here and that's going to take you through to be able to buy that class. Now that doesn't mean we're not doing any more free ones because we are, but by charging a minimal fee, we can do more, which is great. And I'd really appreciate it if you did me a favor as well. So if you've enjoyed any of the videos, free or otherwise, please subscribe and like because the bigger we build this channel and the more people watch, the better pricing we'll get and the more we can do. So only half the people who've watched the videos subscribe. It doesn't mean to say you're going to get inundated with notifications. You'll just get a notification whenever we put a new class up. So that's really cool. But just to show you what you're going to get with this class, you're going to learn how to position all the score lines. Now, a lot of feedback that I've had from a lot of you is you don't like perforation lines. So I teach you how to score with your blade and get a straight line. When we do, when we do stepper cards, because we do mountain folds and valley folds, in the valley fold, I have used a perforation line because... When you are, if you've got, a, you imagine you've got a piece of card with a score line at the top, there's only one way that it will fold because it hasn't cut through deep enough. It's just literally cut the top layer. So it will only fold as a mountain. As soon as you try and do it as a valley, that's, that cut line is going to crease and it's going to look a mess. So with a perforation line, you can fold it both ways. So I teach you how to set all this up without any counting <laughs> which is brilliant to put your score line in, your perforation, your score, your perforation and your score, how to put a cut line down the middle, how to put a score line over here. So if I was sitting at home and I watched all the free classes and then I thought, you know what, I'll treat myself to $4.99 and I'll learn how to make these three cards because not only are you learning how to make the cards, but you're learning how to score and you're learning how to position and all of these three has just been made from a square a straight line and a perforation line I also teach you how to do the mat layers for them too so I think that's a great value you could go and buy SVG files that teach you how to do it but you're not going to learn anything and that's what we're all about at Highlight Crafts that's why we've opened our training academy and that's what we're all about in these classes so click on this link up here that will take you through to purchase $4.99 I mean that's a gift really isn't it and let me know what you think of the videos please and I'd really really appreciate it if you will subscribe because then you get notified so you're not constantly searching you'll just get a little notification that says new video from Highlight Crafts which is great Thank you very, very much for your time. I really appreciate it as ever. And I will see you very soon. And don't forget, if there's anything specific you want to see, please email me, mel at highlightcrafts.com. Take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.